Hi, ninth graders. I am ready for today's lesson, which is 10.7. And how many of you did the extra credit yesterday? That extra part? Well, believe it or not, we didn't get around it. Those of you that didn't do it, well, today I'll teach you how to do it, or I'll remind you how to do it because you have learned in the past earlier lessons how to do it. 10 point C will require us to find the equation of that line after you have uh, plotted your points in the graph uh, on that line. So on page 10, oh no, it's on page 494, it's number 10, number C asks you to get the, the calculation, calculate the equation. So I will tell you how to do that again, or remind you how to do that again. But don't get too excited about that, I'll help you. And we will go to 10.7, and we will talk about how to, the discriminant of a quadrant equation. Okay, so far we've done that quadrant equation. You look at the top of the page there, you see the formula is, you remember x equals negative b, positive negative, and square root, b squared, negative 4ac, but not all equations are, are able to be worked out that way. And, and if you remember back there, they told you, but I don't know that they gave you any problems. If your solution comes down to a negative answer, there is no answer for it. Oh, I think maybe there was a couple of them. But if you come up with a negative answer, after you've worked all the way down to it, and you, oh, a negative answer, you say, oh boy. Did all this work for nothing because there's no solution? Well, this is a little shortcut. This is a discriminant of quadratic equation to see if you can do it. And you do this little shortcut quickly and say, oh yes, it's got a solution, or no, it don't. So here's the, here's the little formula. Just use the one that's inside the box. It's b squared negative 4ac. Just quickly do that. And if you come up with a positive answer, you say, yes, I've got two solutions. I've got a positive and a negative. If you come up with an equal to zero, so if you do this and your answer comes zero, you say, oh, I've got one solution. That means it's going to come out with one answer. And if you come up with a negative number, you say no solutions. Because you cannot get the square root of negative 25. You come up with negative 25, you cannot get that square root. Okay? So if you come up with a negative number, you say no solution. Okay, so I just do number one. Turn over to the next page. Oh yes, on the bottom, sorry I forgot. It gives you those rules to discriminate in the box on the bottom of 493. It shows you them a little clearer than what I scribbled them up here on the board. And they worked a couple of problems there. So, if you turn over to 494, I'll start with the first one. Okay, so the first thing I got, B squared. So I got six squared. You see my B answer is 6. And then I got negative 4. I always put negative 4. That's just here. And then I put AC. And if you have a question, you say, oh, how do I know that? Well, it's real simple. You think about air conditioning. Air conditioning is abbreviated AC. So your first term goes and your last term goes with negative 4. The square, the B squared is your middle term. Okay. So B squared is your middle term goes here. Then your first term and your last term go with negative 4 and multiply those together. So, here we go. My first term was four, and my second term was nine. So I go four times four is 16 negative, and 16 negative times nine is 144 negative. Uh, I didn't know that answer without first pushing in the calculator real good. So yeah, that, that's not in my multiplication pack. <laughs> 16s are not in there, nine 16s are not in there. 144, and then I went six sixes, it's 36 positive, and I got 36, I combined it with 144, and I come up with 108 negative. There are no solutions. I've got a negative number, it equals zero solutions. So your number one answer is zero solutions. Uh, let's go to number four. Let's just drop straight down there. Uh, you got 3x, 2x, negative six. Okay, here we go. I got my B squared, so my B answer is 2, 2 squared, and can you see, am I in the way? And then I've got negative 4, 
My A's answer is 3, and last answer is negative 6. 3, negative 6. Can you see that? Okay, this is real easy. 2 times 2 is 4. So we'll do this one. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 12. And now I have negative 6. 6 12 are 72. And I have two negatives multiplying makes me a positive 72. And here I have a positive 4 over here. And whoa, that makes me 76. Well, it's not real hard to see. A positive answer equals two solutions. So that number four will have two solutions. Okay. Uh, which other one do you want me to do? Let's just do seven. We're just going down the first column. Let's do seven. We have eight, eight. Okay, my B's turn, my square. Eight squared. Is that eight positive? No, eight negative. Eight negative. And then I have negative four. My A's term is seven and two. So I have seven and two. They're all positive. So you ready? This here is eight times eight is sixty-four. Two negatives make me a positive. That's a positive 64, don't have to put it there. Four sevens are 28 negative, and two times 28 is 56 negative. Okay, now I combine 56 negative and positive 64. Okay, whoa here. Uh, I should actually subtract 56 from from 64 to do this right and I go 6 from 14 is going to make me 8 that's it so it's 8 positive is my answer I'll use the biggest sign and that's going to equal 2 solutions it's a positive answer so I get 2 solutions for number 7 that's the same uh, if it comes up to 0 Uh, yes, here we go. Why don't we do number eight? That's a one-fourth, negative one-fourth. Okay, so here we go. B's term squared. What's B's term? Number eight. Who knows what B's term is in number eight? X. X squared? Well, the number's one, right? Okay, so I got one squared. All right, and negative four. What's A's term? Who knows A's term? One, you're right. One, and now who knows C's term? Whoa, negative one fourth. Wow, how do you like that one? Well, let's get this one squared. One times one is one. 4 times 1 is negative 4, is that right? 4 1's are negative 4, and now I've got negative 1 4. Whoa. Well, I don't know if you're allowed to do this or not, but it looks to me like the easiest term there, the easiest way to make that, make that point 25. Point 25. So, you could have wouldn't have needed to. But 0.25 times, negative 0.25 times 4 is going to equal 1. And it's two negative numbers, so it'll be a positive. Okay, I've got one positive. 1 plus 1 is 1. They both equal 1. Is that right? 1 and 1. I was trying to think if my solution is 1 or if it's 2. Number 6. Number 6. Is that the one I did? No, which one I did? I did number number 8. i got to check my answer and see what. There are two solutions. That's right. Number 8 is 1 plus 1 is 2. 
equals two. And so when you have two, that's going to equal two solutions. So you have one plus one equals two, and that's going to equal two solutions. There we go. Uh, if you have any questions on that part, uh, all you're finding out to see if you can go ahead and do the quadratic equation. You're just simply, today, you're just simply doing uh, a, a check. Can I work this one out? And if you can come up with two solutions like this one here, you say, oh yeah, I can. So now you go back and use your quadrique formula, which is your, oh, I don't even know what it all. Well, look at the first of the page. I can't even say it by hand. This here's an F. This here's an erratic sign. And it's B negative, positive, negative. Yeah. So what you do, you first do that little portion under the erratic sign first. And if you see if it can be worked out, and if you can come to a solution, then you can go back and redo the whole problem. No, you don't redo the whole problem. You got this part here, save this part here, and go from there. Now, I told you I would help you with 10C because we didn't do it the other day, or I didn't force you to do it. Sure enough, today we have to do it. I had this little feeling that if I didn't do 10C, the ninth grade were just going to skip 10C and count it wrong. And since I'm not checking too much work, they wouldn't know and they said, let her go. <laughs> now, I might be wrong. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Okay. Uh, so, here we go. 10C, you'll have to use the formula. Uh, there we go. To calculate the equation of the line, you have to use the slope formula, the M formula. And then you use the y equals mx plus b. Okay, so here you have to find two points on the slope. So you find one up at the top, one down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter which ones you find. Uh, I'll tell you which ones I find. I found. I looked down at the bottom and I said, oh, the line doesn't go all the way, so I can't quite use. I use 73 and 72 is what I would have used. So you could actually jump up there if you wanted to use 75. Where does it cross at 75? It crosses 75 and 74. Is that right? If you go 75 on the X and the Y is 74. So you can go 70, 70. Let's go here. Let's go here. 75 and 74. Okay, that's two points where the bottom of the line crosses. Now I go to the top of the line and I'll use that point up at the top is 99 and 97. Uh, 99 and 97. And I had used 99 and 97. So I'm going to use 99 and 97. Okay. And this is the way you will set it up. Uh, y2, you will put up here. You will put 99, 97. And then you'll put 75 and 74. Okay, and these are your two points on the line that we chose. Which you had your line here, and we chose a point down here and a point up here. It didn't have to be exact those points, but that's the ones I chose, uh, these two here. Now I need to subtract those, and uh, 75 from 99 makes me 24, and 74 from 97, oh boy, that's too big a problem, I don't know, 97, 74, 4 from 7 is 3, 23. 23. Okay, so now I need to find the M. So I need to, this is 23 over 24. So I would divide 23, the bottom one, into the top one. And 
that's going to be 1 point something. 23 into 24 would be 1 times 23. Oh, yes, I know how this goes. Use your calculator. <laughs> Uh, 23 would be 110, it'd be 0 and 100. That's going to go 4 times. Uh, 3 fours is 12, 92 to 8. Uh, that's going to make me 3 times. Okay, so I can not X that there. It's going to be 1.04. Okay, my M is 1.04. Is this coming back to you? Is it making sense? Now, I have to put my Y term, and it doesn't matter which term you use, this one or this one. And I am going to use, uh, let me see, I'm going to use the 99, I think, in the 97. So 99, 99 equals X, which would be 97 plus B. And so we have to isolate this down for B. So here I can combine this. What is 101 times 97? Uh, use your calculator. I don't, I don't have my calculator here. I'm not gonna figure this. I'm gonna stop. Right here you go. Your, your, your one answer, I got your one answer, 101.04. So your, your, your X answer, your X answer, and you have to figure out your Y's answer. So if I tell you how to write this, your X is 104. So you're gonna write Y equals X 104. Uh, they put the other one, I should put it this way. 104. And then you will put this answer right here, whatever the B answer is. And that will be your equation. Uh, you multiply these two together, and then you bring it over here and subtract it from 99, and that will be your B's answer. That will be what you put there. You finish that out, and that will tell you, you will have written the slope for this line which we had given at these two points. Back up here, refresh your memory. We had given it a 75 and 74. 75 and 74. And here we gave it 99 and 97. Now you could have chosen another line up here. You could have chosen another line there. You did not have to choose the ones I chose to find the slope equation. Again, you will write a y equals 104x and whatever this answer here is, whatever b's answer is, which we have not figured it out. That's your problem. You have a good day and I'll catch you later.